In this video, we are going to continue to learn about different sentence structures, different syntax. In this class, you are learning about three different structures. So in this video, we're going to focus on number two. The particular structure we are looking at today is this structure here, subject plus transitive verb plus direct object. We are going to learn this structure now. Let's start. Before we get started, we need to understand that all sentences need two parts. What is necessary again? A subject and a verb. That's right. We need all sentences to have subjects and verbs. The verb is very important in a sentence because it tells us what to add after. The verb helps us understand the syntax. So in this video, we're going to take a look at this syntax, subject, transitive verb, and direct object. What is a transitive verb? A transitive verb is a verb that needs a direct object after it. Some verbs need an object after, but others do not. That is the difference between a transitive verb and an intransitive verb. So starting with T, transitive, you need a direct object after. If you're not sure if the verb is a transitive verb or intransitive verb, use a dictionary to help you find this information. So transitive verbs need direct objects. Here is an example of a sentence that is using a transitive verb. Let's study it together. He is the subject of the sentence, paints. Paint here is an action verb, and this verb is a transitive verb. We know that it's transitive because after paint, we see here a direct object. Posters is receiving this action of painting. So paint, is a transitive verb because we use a noun after. We need a direct object. One very common transitive verb that we use in English is the verb have. Have. I have, you have, he has, she has, it has, we have, they have. When we use this verb, we need to follow the verb with a direct object. In this example, I am showing you how to use the verb have in the simple present tense, but you can use it in other tenses. Just make sure that when you use the verb, it matches your subject. Let's look at some examples of how to use the verb have. The first four sentences are using the verb have, the subject, the transitive verb, and after the transitive verb, we need a direct object. So let's study these examples. My kitchen has a sink. My kitchen is the subject. Has is my transitive verb. A sink. A sink is what is inside my kitchen. So the sink is my direct object. So here in this sentence, I can see there are two nouns. We are talking about two nouns. We are saying that the kitchen the kitchen has a sink. So kitchen is my first noun. In this sentence, it is the subject of the sentence. And sink, sink is my second noun. Sink is the direct object. We are explaining the relationship between these two nouns. My kitchen has a sink. The sink is inside the kitchen. So we are showing the connection with this transitive verb. Number two, three, and four also use the verb have. But numbers five, six, and seven use other examples of transitive verbs. Pause the video here to study these examples. Here are more examples of transitive verbs. Use these verbs here. Make sentences with these verbs. Remember, to use this structure. Start with the subject, then use the transitive verb, 
and add a direct object after. Pause the video here to take notes of these verbs. Okay, so one more time, what is the difference between transitive and intransitive verbs? Let's look at the difference. Mario studied. She drove. The students asked. In these examples, I am using these verbs as intransitive verbs. They are good sentences, but they do not give enough information. We want to know what receives the action. We want more information so that we can change these sentences to be stronger sentences like these here. When we use Mario studied English, English is a direct object. So now the verb study is a transitive verb. She drove her car. Her car is a direct object and it is helping me understand that she drove her car. Her car received the action of driving. Number three, the students asked three questions. Three questions were asked. So questions is the direct object. So here you can see the difference between sentences that do not have direct objects and sentences that do have direct objects. You want to add more parts of speech to your sentences so that your sentences can be more detailed and specific. If you're not sure how to find the direct objects, you can use questions. For example, you can use these questions here. What or who did, and then you use the information from the sentence. You can use the subject and the verb. For example, I can ask, what did Mario study? What did Mario study? He studied English. English is my direct object. What did she drive? Her car. Her car is the direct object. Number three, what did they ask? They asked three questions. So three questions is my direct object. You can use this question here to help you find direct objects in sentences. If you want to add more information to your sentences, you can. You can add indirect objects to show who or what receives the direct object. So look at these examples here. Mario brought me an apple. Me is the indirect object because me receives the apple, receives the direct object. Look at number two. She sang her sister a Chinese song. Chinese song is the direct object. Who received the Chinese song? Her sister did. Her sister is the indirect object. Number three. The students asked their teacher three questions. They asked three questions. Questions is the direct object. Who received the questions? The teacher. So to find what receives the direct object, to find the indirect object, you need to ask who or what received and then use the direct object from the sentence. For example here, who received the apple? Mario brought me an apple. Who received the apple? Me. Me is the indirect object. Who received the Chinese song? Her sister. Who received the three questions? The teacher. So you can use this question to find the indirect objects of sentences. On this page, you can see 10 different examples using the sentence structure of subject plus transitive verb plus direct object. Pause the video here to study the examples. Pay attention to the verb and the direct object after. Some sentences also have indirect objects. For example, sentence number three, I see an indirect object and a direct object. Sentence number four, I can see after the transitive verb, I have two different nouns. I have an indirect object and a direct object. Pause the video here to study these examples more carefully. Let's review what we learned in this video. In this video, we're learning all about sentence structure number two. 
Sentence structure number two is subject plus transitive verb plus direct object. This sentence structure is used with transitive verbs because remember, we need a direct object after. Some examples of transitive verbs are have, study, or see. Remember, you use a direct object after the transitive verb to show who or what received the action. And if you want, you can add an indirect object to show who or what received the direct object. If you use an indirect object, put the indirect object after the verb and before the direct object. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helps you use the sentence structure correctly.